Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A capital murder suspect accused of killing two people at a San Antonio home is captured by the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force overnight. Details coming up. And as the latest heat wave shows no mercy, the extreme weather also turned deadly in Georgia, where authorities say 10 soldiers were hit by lightning. Oh, my goodness. OK, back here outside with live cam at home, barely 80 degrees, not much of a drop in temperatures overnight. Mike is standing by with more. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 21st of July. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, 81 already. Mm -hmm. And we're at 4.30 in the morning. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting that we'll be lucky, Mike Osterhage, to reach 80 degrees as a morning low. Uh, we may drop down another couple of five. I did go for 80 for the low temperature okay. because the humidity is so high this morning, too. Yeah. That's the other problem. And yes, we did hit 104 yesterday. Yes, a new record high temperature. Hey, it won't be as hot today. Yay! by two degrees, but we'll take anything we can get here trying to spin this as best as possible. Do have a few clouds hanging around. We'll have a couple of those this morning and 82 degrees. That's all we have cooled down from yesterday's 104. A lot of 82s on the map and then Again, the big problem is these numbers, 76 for a dew point up there at Canyon Lake. I mean, 74, 75 is getting there, and then you add another degree on that. That's really, really humid up around Canyon Lake. Uh, we've actually dropped down one degree, but still 74 for a dew point temperature there at Hello to 76, also in Pleasanton. A ton of humidity out there this morning, so we have heat index readings. 89 New Braunfels, Canyon Lake 87 is what it feels like here in town, and a pair of 88s over there, Hondo, as well as in Castroville. Uh, mold is is on the low side, although it did go up yesterday from the previous day's reading. 92 today and at noon, 102 for a high temperature. That'll tie the record today. Like I said yesterday, we did set the record. Also, that's going to put us into sole third place for the most triple digit days, and we're just going to keep racking those up. We once again have a heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until eight o'clock for basically the eastern half of our viewing area. You want to take it easy anything as far as any changes in the offing details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. New this morning, the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force is announcing the capture and arrest of a capital murder suspect. 24 one Antonio Reyes was arrested by U.S. Marshal Service last night on charges involving that capital murder. Reyes was wanted by San Antonio police after a warrant was issued for his arrest Tuesday. Reports state that Reyes is accused of killing two victims in their home, then setting their home on fire. After a thorough investigation, the task force tracked down Reyes to a motel located in the 1400 block of Culebra. Reyes was arrested and taken into custody without incident. He is currently being held in custody at the Bear County Jail. A federal grand jury has returned at least two indictments in the migrant tragedy in San Antonio. A trial date has not been set. 46-year-old Omero Zamorano Jr. and 28-year-old Christian Martinez are facing human smuggling charges. One count involved death, the other is serious injury. Now, both suspects are still in federal custody without bond. Investigators say they were involved in transporting dozens of migrants in the back of an 18-wheeler. 53 died after they were found trapped in the back of that big rig last month. A name change now permanent for a west side community here in San Antonio. Street signs now mark a roadway residents fought to change for several years. It is now historic old, old Highway 90. City leaders first changed the name to Enrique Barrera Parkway back in 2015 to honor a former city councilman. Businesses in the area are going to cause confusion and hurt their businesses and the community's identity. Back in February, council members voted to change the name back. And now signs are up to return to the road to Old Highway 90. Now to a deadly lightning strike at a U.S. Army base in Georgia, injuring 10 soldiers. Meanwhile, more than two-thirds of all Americans are experiencing heat of at least 90 degrees. ABC's Christy Aletto has the details. This morning, the extreme weather gripping much of the country turning deadly on a U.S. Army base. Authorities say 10 soldiers were hit by lightning at Fort Gordon in Georgia, one of them dying from the injuries. 29 states are under excessive heat warnings and heat advisories today. Experts say climate change has made rare heat waves three to five degrees warmer. And in the southwest, scientists believe the worst drought in 12 centuries is now underway. 
These new satellite images show the rapidly decreasing water levels in Lake Mead, which provides water to 25 million people. Right now, those uh, outflows are exceeding the inflows and the lake levels are going down, just like your bank account would decrease. Meanwhile, Americans' electric bills are predicted to increase by 20 percent this summer compared to last year to an average of $540, largely due to soaring natural gas prices. And in New York City, the power company is asking customers to keep thermostats at 70 eight degrees to conserve energy. On Wednesday, President Biden announced new executive actions to address rising temperatures, including $2.3 billion for stronger infrastructure to withstand climate change and funding to help low-income families improve air conditioning in their homes. I can do more because not enough is being done now. Christy Aletto, ABC News, New York. About 10 wildfires continue to burn across Texas this morning. One of the biggest is the Chalk Mountain Fire in northeast Texas of uh, northeast North Texas, east of Stephenville, rather. Right now it's burning more than 6,000 acres and is still only 10% contained. Another 6,000 acre fire near Wichita Falls is also still burning. However, it's 98% contained. Closest one to us, the Honey Creek Fire, burning about 300 acres west of San Antonio in Uvalde County, just west of Garner State Park. It's about 60% contained, according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. Americans will have access to more monkeypox vaccines, but experts say it's still not enough for everyone who is eligible to receive one. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services just announced the government distributed another 59,000 doses of vaccines to states and other jurisdictions over the past week. That brings the distribution total to about 191,000 doses. The HHS expects more than 700,000 doses to be delivered to the strategic national stockpile in the coming weeks. The House January 6th committee headed back to prime time for its eighth hearing tonight. It will attempt to make the case that Donald Trump beliefs, uh, Donald Trump's beliefs about the stolen election fueled the Capitol riots. Tonight's hearing will dive into that 187 minutes, minutes the former president failed to act despite pleas for help from aides, allies, even his own family, two of his former aides will testify live. Time now, 437 and 81 degrees for now. Picnics and cookouts are summer traditions, but about a food poisoning could happen with these hot temperatures. We have the best way to keep your food fresh. A UTSA senior gets a big honor, plus a Texas A&M football player will not be at SEC Media Days today after getting arrested. We're gonna have more next. Checking traffic right now. Let's see what's happening out there on the highways and byways of the Alamo City. There's I-37 at Pecan Valley. No problems to report. And starting warm already at 81 degrees. Uh, looking forward to warming up even more. However, the good news is it won't be as warm as it was yesterday afternoon. We'll be right back. 440, welcome back in morning sports. UTSA senior safety Rashad Wisdom named a nominee for the 2022 All-State AFCA Good Works team. It's announced by All-State in the American Football Coaches Association. Wisdom, one of 114 student athletes with stellar community service, academic dedication and impact on and off the field who appear on the list. The final team will be announced coming up in September. A Texas A&M senior wide receiver and team captain was arrested yesterday. Uh, Aeneas Smith was arrested. He's facing charges of driving while intoxicated, unlawful carrying of a weapon, and marijuana possession. Smith was scheduled to join Jimbo Fisher at SEC Media Days today. That is no longer the case. Aggie suspended Smith and are looking into the situation. According to the report obtained by ESPN, Smith was arrested after he was stopped for speeding. He was booked in the Brazos County Jail. After his arrest by a and police, he was released after posting bond. Houston Astros starting pitcher Lance McCullers Jr. coming to San Antonio to face the missions as reported by Mark Berman of Fox 26. McCullers will make his first rehab start Friday at Wolf Stadium for the Corpus Christi Hooks. Lance is scheduled to work two innings, the righty placed on the injured list uh, to open the season with a right forearm strain. Pitchers can spend up to 30 days on rehab assignments, so the start of his work suggests an early mid-August timetable for his return to the big leagues if all goes as expected. And time now, 442 and 81 degrees for now. Are you storing your food properly? Up next, the best ways to keep your food from spoiling. 
Next, a mother talking for the first time about when she returned her son, turned her son into police after she says he was planning a mass shooting. And welcome back. It's about 445. A mother who turned her son into the police after she suspected he was planning a mass shooting is speaking about why she did it. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an exclusive interview with a mother who made the difficult decision to report her own son to the police. Nicole Schubert says she found his journal detailing plans of a horrific killing spree that was to begin at home. What's it like for a mother to read something like that? Devastating. That's my child. I, I gave birth to him. You know, it hurts a lot. It still hurts. Schubert calling police just hours later. Your first instinct is, as a parent, is to protect your child. But at that point, I felt like if he is actually going to do these things, he would be safer in jail. And coming up at 7 a.m., her message for other parents. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, having a picnic or cookout at a park might be a summer tradition, but with weather like this, nasty bacteria can quickly become a problem. Well, on your sides, Marilyn Moritz shows us how to keep the food cool and keep food poisoning off the menu. Food is always at the center of Megan Kenny's family get-togethers. In the summers, we like to go to the park and make picnics and be at the beach. Picnics and cookouts are summer traditions, but you don't want to invite a bout of food poisoning. Bacteria love hot and humid summer weather, which makes it the perfect time of year for harmful bacteria to multiply on food. And when this happens, someone eating the food can get sick. More people get food poisoning in the summer than at any other time of year. So here's what the experts say you should do to keep the picnic safe. First, prep your food and coolers the night before. Yeah. Fill the coolers with ice to drop the temperature and keep all of your food refrigerated until it's time to leave. Then pack it full, avoiding open space. Put ice or ice packs on top. If you're driving far, keep the food in the AC, not in the trunk. And when you arrive, set the cooler in the shade. A separate cooler just for drinks is a smart idea because that lid gets opened and closed a lot. And it's not just dishes with mayo to be wary of on a hot day. If the temperature is higher than 90 degrees, one hour is the limit for any food to be left out of the cooler. So try putting cold dishes inside a larger bowl filled with plenty of ice. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. I stick to that one hour rule. Definitely, especially as hot as it gets here. Mm -hmm. I-37 at Pecan Valley looking good right now. I didn't see any problems when I was looking at some of those TransGuide cameras earlier in the show. Well, Mike Ostrich joins us now with a KSAT Connect picture that shows our son apparently going supernova. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like something like a supernova, like something out of a sci-fi movie or, or whatever, and it's the, the ray beam, which is just cooking everything. So, yeah, hot. That's another way to describe it. 104 yesterday, that was a new record high temperature. We're going to tie a record today. We've got a couple of clouds uh, hanging around here right now. Otherwise, over there at 10 at 410, everything's uh, moving along fairly well. And uh, yeah, we did hit 41 days now this year. And so that put us into a tie for third place. And after today, we're going to be taking 2013 off of this graphic because we'll move into uh, sole possession of third place for the most triple digit days. Yay. I don't know if there's a card for that or not, but uh, and I don't mean to be flipped out of it. And we're going to keep counting triple digit days throughout the rest of the forecast. Humidity, dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture that we always talk about, they are up, uh, you know, doesn't seem like a lot, but up six degrees there in Catula. And so that is a lot more of a humid morning when you step outside. Yesterday, of course, 104 here in town, just about everybody except Rock Springs came in and Beeville uh, at Victoria came in at uh, triple digit temperatures. 109, those are the actual air temperature readings at Laredo as well as Catula today. Shave off a couple of notches. It's still going to be brutally hot out there. Well up into the low hundreds all around the area. We will have a heat index to deal with on top of that. So a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. We'll stay just going for 80 for the low temperature this morning. 
five degrees above normal 90 already at 11 o'clock. A lot more sunshine. Boy, that sun comes out and uh, just like that supernova picture and it's going to heat things up very quickly. We make it up to 102 later on this afternoon. Again, like I said, that's going to tie the record and then we'll still have some humidity around. So that's going to put the heat index readings 107 here in town is the forecast 110 right around Catula and there's really no change in the forecast at all going into the weekend going into next week 92 at noon again mostly sunny skies and then that high temperature of 102 that will tie the record for today we do have the heat advisory that goes into effect at noon up until eight o'clock this evening and that's primarily for the eastern half of our area and just because it's not posted out there to the west doesn't mean I mean you got to be careful obviously and throughout the next uh, seven days nothing changes around here we will continue to chalk up the triple digit temperatures uh if you like consistency i mean this upper 70s that. low hundreds all the way through the weekend and we'll still have somewhat of a heat index to deal with and we're going to continue on and again there's not even any you know glitches disturbances Nothing. anything perhaps by late next week but i mean how many times have i said that in the you know beyond long range forecast in the past month or so i saw a video on instagram yesterday and there was a guy talking off camera and he goes baby you've been working so hard lately i just want to let you know i love you and you're doing a great job and then he leans over and kisses his air conditioning unit <laughs> 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 yes. yes, those AC units it, have yes. been and, working and hard. I think all the experts say too, give it a break every once in a while too. If, if, if you, you can. can. Yeah, yeah. So because they're not made to run just 24-7. Oh, they're not? Okay. Uh, 451, 81 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at a new version of Beauty and the Beast for its 30th anniversary. Plus, Ethan Hawke highlights a Hollywood power couple in a new series. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 184, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 0704, Fireball 9. Cash 5, looking at 12, 13, 29, 32, 33. Lotto, Texas, 12, 20, 29, 33, 37, 48. And your Powerball numbers, 10, 20, 23, 49, 65, Powerball 22, Power Play 3. Good luck. Welcome back. A Hollywood power couple is the subject of a new docuseries. Related to what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Paul had begun working on a memoir. They did over 100 interviews. The lives of legendary Hollywood power couple Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward are the subject of a new docuseries from Ethan Hawke. And Hawke tells us the last movie stars contain some surprises. I just would have never known that Paul Newman was as insecure as he was. You know, like it's it's kind of a relief to realize that he was sweating through three shirts and a nervous wreck and worried he wasn't good enough. And you're like, wow, we're all like that. The Last Movie Stars features actors reading the words of Newman and Woodward with George Clooney and Laura Linney voicing the couple. All episodes streaming on HBO Max today. We have a new Belle. The music artist Her will play the lead role in the ABC animated and live action special Beauty and the Beast, a 30th celebration. In a statement, the Oscar and five-time Grammy winner says the world will get to see a black and Filipino Belle, and she's always wanted to be a Disney princess. The program will air in December. Eddie Vedder's throat screwed up by the heat wave in Europe. Pearl Jam canceled Wednesday's show in Vienna because the singer's voice was damaged from heat, dust, and smoke from the fires after their recent outdoor gig in Paris. We'll see if he recovers in time for tomorrow's concert in Prague. And happy birthday to Juno Temple. The Ted Lasso and The Offer star is 33 today, while Encanto and Orange is the New Black's Diane Guerrero is 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 456 and 81 degrees for now. Ahead on GMSA at 5, the House January 6th Committee headed back to prime time for its eighth hearing tonight. We'll have a preview of proceedings that will delve into specific actions of former President Trump during the Capitol riot. And you will probably soon see more electric mail trucks from the U.S. Postal Service. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. One more look outside with uh, Transcad right now at I-35 at Nogalitos. No problems to report. Normal heavy traffic, 35 and Walsham Road, as is usual at just about any time of day or night. We'll talk to Stephen coming up. Live from KSAT 12. 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Emlyn in Washington. The January 6 House Select Committee holds another primetime hearing tonight, detailing minute by minute what former President Trump was doing during the riot. What the committee could show that the public has not seen before. The details come. And taking a look outside with a live cam, the good news will be a few degrees cooler this afternoon. The bad news, it's still going to be hot. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, July 21st. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far. Uh, yesterday, we were trying to keep cool, we went to the mall, and I think everybody had the same idea. Everybody was yeah. at the mall yesterday. <laughs> you were over at North Star, right? Yes, North Star indoors and trying to beat the heat, Mike. Yeah. yeah, Mike, and I know we're not the only ones baking. Most of the country is just, just absolutely scorching hot these days. Yeah to the uh, the northeast so um, we are you know the La Nina year that we are in right now and that is keeping it very hot and very dry around here unfortunately we haven't had rain in forever and uh, yes it is factual to say it is going to be cooler today in reality like Steph said it's going to be just still very hot add 20 to this current temperature yeah we're only down to 82 degrees right now we got a couple of clouds hanging around here a lot more humidity 102 high temperature yes that is down from yesterday's 104 which set a new record 102 is going to be tying the record today and the uh, aquifer which you know it went up a couple of days ago but the past few days it's been going down in pretty good chunks down another six tenths of a foot of course as I say check with your local municipality as far as any watering restrictions mold is on the low side this morning and of course with the very warm temperatures doesn't take much humidity to give us a heat index and so 82 feels like 87 out there at the airport right now 88 in Castroville 86 in Hondo and 90 now is what it feels like up the road in Canyon Lake. And again, it's 501 in the morning just to kind of put things in perspective. So warmer and more humid this morning compared to yesterday. And then throughout the day, we tie the record 102. And this is going to be day number 42 of triple digit temperatures. So it will be sole third place as far as the most triple digit days in a calendar year down a degree or two the next couple of days, but it's going to be very consistent. We'll stay right around low hundreds, 100, 101, 102, all the way through the weekend. Low temperatures will be in the upper 70s, consistently hot. And I should have put on there consistently dry because not a drop of rain in the forecast, unfortunately. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, sir. What's going on? Just clearing that drop of tear after hearing your forecast, Mike. But <laughs> <laughs> right now, thankfully, drivers won't have a lot to complain about. Let's go ahead and get a quick look around town. 37 at Houston, 37 at Pecan Valley. We can see the morning is off to a pretty decent start. Not a lot of activity out there, but we are continuing to see some work there along 410 at Evers. Not really impacting traffic since it is still pretty early. But we know one area that was seeing a lot of slowdowns was over off I-10 East. And this morning, unfortunately, we are still seeing the same situation as we bring you right in where we continue to see that bridge work taking place right along the eastbound lanes of FM 1518. And we also know that the work is being done in the westbound lanes, which is why we're already seeing a little bit of yellow crews are still out there. But looks like they could be clearing a lot sooner than usual. Uh, yesterday, they wrapped around 10 in the morning, but this morning they may be wrapping a little bit sooner. We're going to have more updates on that in the next few minutes. Uh, hopefully we'll get a view from the conditions from trans guide a little bit later on, but let's check those travel times while we are at it. I 10 westbound. So we are seeing a little bit of a slowdown at this point. 31 minutes to the Alamo City if you're traveling in from Seguin. So just prepare for that. About 33 minutes coming in from Lavernia on 87 northbound and it's a 28 minute drive time traveling in from Flotusville and it looks like that drive time from Seguin just went down to half an hour. So some good news, hopefully some better news as we continue to watch that area closely, but back here on Transguide, things are moving just fine. Mark Steph. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to figure out where and why a man was shot overnight. The situation ended after midnight on the northeast side in the 4600 block of Goldfield near 35 in Ritterman. SAPD says a 19-year-old man was shot in the arm and was not cooperating with police afterward. Police say he managed to drive to the Industry Park Drive area where he called for help and was eventually taken to a hospital. SAPD also says a friend who was with the victim lied about his identity, so officers detained him. Tension continues to grow in Uvalde as more reports highlight the failures of law enforcement response. The community continues to demand District Police Chief Pete Eredondo be to stripped of his title. Now, according to the Associated Press, Uvalde's top school official recommended the firing of Eredondo on Tuesday. So now the school board says they'll consider the move in a special meeting on Saturday. However, some people 
still aren't satisfied. It feels good because at least, you know, they're getting, you know, somewhere, you know, they're starting with someone, but they should have done that a long time ago, a very long time ago. The only reason they're doing it is because they're feeling the heat. To bring back. School officials did not comment any further on the special meeting. More people are going to the San Antonio Food Bank for help. The lines there getting longer as more people face higher rent, utility, and gas prices. Summers are already busy since kids are out of school and families are serving more meals at home. Now add inflation, and that has stretched families past their limit. Taking a live look at the U.S. Capitol tonight, the January 6th House Select Committee's primetime hearing is expected to be a dramatic three-hour case. It will detail what former President Donald Trump did the day of the Capitol riots. And sources tell ABC News that outtakes of the video President Trump made the day after the riot could also be released. ABC's N1 has more from Washington. Under scrutiny in tonight's primetime January 6th House Select Committee hearing. The 187 minutes the panel says then President Donald Trump refused to call off a violent attack by his mob of supporters at the U.S. Capitol. So the American public need to know exactly what was happening. The next day, Trump released a three minute pre recorded message to condemn the attack. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. But behind the scenes, a different story. ABC News learning the committee is expected to show some of the outtakes they obtained from that pre-recorded message, showing a president struggling to say the election was over and to condemn rioters, according to sources. We have just been through an intense election and emotions are high, but now tempers must be cooled and calm restored. The president, sources say, only taped the message under immense pressure from aides, advising him to do so to end any discussions about the 25th Amendment, which is used to replace a president. Tonight's hearing also comes as the Secret Service says it was only able to recover a single text exchange from January 5th and 6th after the committee subpoenaed the agency. Any other messages, the Secret Service says, were deleted during a device upgrade on January 27th. Six committee chairman sent a letter on the 16th of January saying preserve everything. Officials now saying this could be a violation of the Federal Records Act. The committee also expecting to hear from Trump's former White House counsel and to call two former aides to testify, Deputy White House Press Secretary Sarah Matthews and Deputy National Security Advisor Matt Pottinger. Both resigned after January 6th. Former President Trump has called the committee's investigation rigged and one-sided. The panel says it plans to have an interim report out by September. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 507, about 81 degrees. And still had more details about U.S. Postal Service's plans to put more electric mail trucks on the road. And up next, details on new allegations against a local man accused of running over and killing his wife. And it's 5.07 and we are in the 80s already. Those temperatures are expected to creep up again. We'll be right back. Five eleven. Today will be the fourth day of the Estrada trial. The family of Domingo Basqueta says she was run over and killed, and her husband David Estrada is accused of doing it. During proceedings yesterday, family says she was also abused weeks before she died. The victim's sister took the stand, and she told a jury she saw Estrada repeatedly punch his wife outside a family birthday party back in 2020. Two weeks later, Basqueta was killed. Police say Estrada claimed someone else ran her over. They say he changed the story after seeing photos of blood and damage to his truck. And then he tried to kind of blame her for not jumping out of the way. Like she should have known. Estrada is free on bond while his trial takes place. He faces up to 99 years in prison if convicted. We are approaching 512, still 81 degrees. And still ahead, how DoorDash is making securing deliveries involving alcohol with some new features. Now a major airline is using a new digital way to speed up check-ins. 
Nobody does anything perfectly the first time, or the second, even the third. We learn from mistakes. But when it comes to retirement planning, who can afford mistakes? Smart Asset can help you avoid those unpleasant mishaps with a free guide, The Seven Crucial Mistakes of Retirement Planning. We also match you with up to three vetted fiduciary financial advisors who can help you achieve your retirement goals. Using Smart Asset is free with no obligation. Discover what others learned the hard way at smartasset.com. Oh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. I've been telling everyone, the secret to great teeth is having healthy gums. Crest Advanced Gum Restore detoxifies below the gum line and restores by helping heal gums in as little as seven days. Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Good morning, 515. The U.S. Postal Service now says it will more than double its order of new electric delivery trucks. ABC's Christy Aletto has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, more electric vehicles at the Postal Service. The agency says 40% of the new delivery trucks will be electric, a dramatic increase from the initial plan to make just 10% electric. The Postal Service made the change to comply with the Biden administration's climate goals. And DoorDash has launched a two-step ID verification process for alcohol delivery. Users first have to upload a photo of their ID to the DoorDash app. Then drivers will scan the ID when they make the drop off. And finally, high tech tool to speed up check in at the airport. Alaska Airlines is rolling out electronic bag tags. Travelers can use the airline's mobile app to activate the tags 24 hours before your flight. So when you get to the airport, you simply touch your phone to the tag to call up your flight information. And those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Clever. Yeah, it is. Look forward to some changes there. Time now, 516. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I, I haven't been to an airport in so long. I forgot how all of that even works traditionally. So <laughs> I got to go give it a try. But we know how the roads are looking. I've been on the roads and they look great. We have over 200 TransGuide cameras and back here at KSAT, we have about 20 of those views and you can take a look there and everything looks pretty great. 35 at Brooklyn Avenue. Just remember to drive safe. We saw some work that was taking place off of 410 at Evers. That has cleared out and construction will really be the main talking point, at least at this hour. So let's go ahead and take you right to the map because we talked about something that was taking place over here in the eastbound lanes of I-10 where some bridge work was has been ongoing. But uh, or yesterday we saw such a huge slowdown in both the east and westbound lanes for folks that were traveling to and from Seguin. Right now it looks a lot better. It looks like that may have already wrapped up, but I'll give our friends at TransGuide a call. Find out if we can get a view of the conditions out there just to double check, but make sure you plan your commute ahead of time because we do have some barrier work continuing to take place over here off US 90 in Bear County. That should be wrapping on Friday, July 22nd, but crews will be out there from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon. Expect a single main lane and exit ramp closure in both directions right there at Montgomery Road. And of course, that information on our website. Quick way to get there. Grab those phones, open your camera app and scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. It has a list of all the closures taking place throughout the <laughs> month of July, so make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. Guys. Hey, hey. Stephen, two words for you when you uh, check bags. <laughs> it's called carry on. Carry on. Exactly. <laughs> yes. um, so, of course, yesterday was the anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. Did right. you know the story that once they got back into the lunar module and they had a rest period and the thing was crowded, so one of the astronauts was up on the actual engine bell there and one was on the floor and he looked over and there was this little thing on the floor. I was like, huh, that looks important. And it was the button for the circuit breaker that would activate the ascent lens, asset engine. Oh, engine. more than important, that vital. They, yeah. It broke off <gasps> because of all their equipment. And they're like, okay. They took a pen and stuck it in there oh, to close yeah, the yeah. circuit so oh, they could yeah. then goodness. Yes, <laughs> ignite the ascent engine. So mm -hmm. that would not be a good feeling if you're on the moon. Not at so, all. No. Beautiful picture, though. And... Uh, yeah, the last quarter moon. That's very pretty. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, we've got some clouds hanging around here right now. 
We'll see a lot more sunshine today. Temperatures only down to 82 out there at the airport. 81 Canyon Lake and a lot of upper 70. I mean, these numbers are up a few degrees compared to this time yesterday. These numbers are actually up as well. The amount of moisture in the atmosphere. I mean, 76 Stinson Pleasanton. It is like walking outside into a rainforest. So just get ready for that. So we have heat index readings. 87 Stinson, the airport. Canyon Lake, uh, 88 over there is the uh, you're the prize winner right now in Castroville for the warmest temperature, at least the heat index reading right now. We're going to stay in the low 80s this morning, right around 80 degrees. A couple of clouds hanging around here, and they will continue to break up throughout the morning. Same thing as we've seen the past uh, couple of days. 90 already at 11 o'clock, 92 at noon, and add 10 to that. We're going to hit 102 today. That's going to tie the record today. Of course, down, yes, a couple of notches compared to yesterday. We will still have some uh, heat index to deal with later on this afternoon, so that's why we do have the uh, heat advisory, which will go into effect today at noon. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. All right, here's the long range computer model. And, uh, you know, sometimes these long range models, at least way down the road, give you a little bit of hope. But uh, this one going through the next couple of days in through the weekend, we'll have some morning clouds around here, plenty of sunshine in the afternoon and even into the middle part of next week. I mean, this tries to scare up a couple of showers here and this is a week from today. But this is kind of wishful thinking at best. And of course, that high is still right on top of us for all intents and purposes. It may be weakening ever so slightly, and that's why temperatures are down just a, a couple of notches. But it is going to be a very consistent forecast all the way through the weekend into next week. Even as far as temperatures, it's almost a kind of a, a cut and paste sort of forecast. 92 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. And then high temperature today of 102 that will tie the record for today's date. And we have the heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until 8 o'clock tonight. We will continue to chalk up. We're going to move into sole possession of third place. <laughs> hmm. in, in some instances, that's pretty good. I don't think in this case. So no. but the most yeah. uh, triple digit days, we're going to con continue mm -hmm. to uh, chalk them up. So. Somebody asked me, uh, how hot is it down there in Texas? Somebody obviously doesn't live here. And I said, it, it reminds me of opening up the oven and you smell that kind of baking yes. smell. The air is literally baking. And it was it was worse in other places. Like there were places I like Wichita know. Falls got up to like 115 yesterday. Yeah, 110 down around uh, Carrizo Springs. Here. Oh, my goodness. And again, the wind the, feels like, like you said, a hair dryer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just on high. Yes, yeah. but at least we're kind of used to the heat in this area. There are other areas, you know, right. those temperatures that are not used to. Yeah, when it's upper 90s it. up in the New England, that, yeah. that's tougher for them. Kind of like when it gets, you know, below freezing here. Exactly. Same situation. But yeah, just take it easy outside. Yes, sir. 521, about 81 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Europe's historic heat wave affects Pearl Jam, plus new looks at breaking and anything's possible. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 184, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 0704, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 12, 13, 29, 32, 33. Lotto, Texas, 12, 20, 29, 33, 37, 48. And your Powerball numbers, 10, 20, 23, 49, 65, Powerball 22, Power Play 3, good luck. Five twenty five Pearl Jam cancels a show due to the extreme heat plus a Star Wars star takes on a new role. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The heat has gotten to Pearl Jam. Minutes before they were scheduled to take the stage in Vienna, Austria, the band canceled their show. They posted on social media that the heat, dust and smoke at their Lollapalooza Paris concert last weekend had damaged singer Eddie Vedder's throat. Europe is in the midst of a historic heat wave. This is Sergeant Bernard. Is everyone all right in there? As long as everybody stays calm, nobody gets hurt. I have a bomb and I'm gonna kill myself and everybody in here. My demands and I'm Here's your first look at Breaking, starring John Boyega as a Marine veteran who takes a bank hostage after he's denied support from Veterans Affairs. Nicole Bahari and the late Michael K. Williams also star in the thriller, based on a true story, which hits theaters August 26th. No way. That that's so good. Yeah. 
You, you can have it. Really? Here's a look at the first clip from Anything's Possible about a boy with a crush on a confident trans girl, played by trans actress Eva Rain. Billy Porter directs the coming of age story, which debuts Friday on Prime Video. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 526 and 81 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, why a bill meant to protect same-sex marriage is facing an uphill battle after passing in the U.S. House. Plus, how some bioengineers here in Texas are creating a new way to rebuild new muscle following injuries or sickness. All right, Steph, are you ready for a cheese-infused martini? Ew. <laughs> we'll tell you about this new Veltini film from Velveeta. No. Coming up. Yes, Mike. Mike says no. <laughs> and inflation is at an all-time high this summer. That means you might be feeling the pain at the pump or sticker shock at the grocery store. So ahead on GMSA at 6, some simple ways that can help cut those costs. A guest at this motel has had some help in checking out from members of the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say that capital murder suspect who they tracked down here has now checked into the Bear County Jail. I'll tell you more about it. And we broke another record yesterday, reaching 104 degrees. Today, we're not expecting to break any records, but it's still going to be hot. Good morning to you. It's Thursday. It is July 21st, and I have a request of Mike Osterhage. Maybe yes. start listing temperatures in Celsius as some sort of Jedi yeah. mind trick. <laughs> so we'll just put it at about uh, 40 right now. Yeah. yeah. For the high today. So. Okay. Yeah. If that if that makes you feel better. So I mean, it, it's like 99 versus 100. So and no, we're not going to break a record. We'll set a record or tie a record today, I should say. But then we'll also um, kind of move up in the record books, if you will. 82 degrees right now. That's all we've cooled down so far this morning. And we're not going to drop down that much more because we got a ton of moisture in the atmosphere and that tends to hold the heat in. Plus, we've got some clouds hanging around here. You can see a few of them off in the distance looking off past the uh, airport right now. Winds out of the uh, south primarily about 10 miles per hour. It feels like 87 when you step outside at uh, at the airport. 88 Castroville, 86 in Hondo and uh, yeah, rather cool 78 for the heat index right now at Bernie stage. Mold is on the low side, but it did go up from yesterday's reading and uh, throughout the rest of today, 103 o'clock, 102. Yep, that ties today's record and puts us into sole possession of third place for the most triple digit temperatures ever recorded around here. We do have a heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until eight o'clock and uh, probably going to have some more of these posted in one way, shape or another as we're going into the weekend because temperatures are going to be pretty consistent, consistent now going in through the weekend. We'll see if there's any rain anywhere coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on, sir? Well, the temperatures have been consistent and so has the traffic. Mike, let's get a look right now at 532. Not a lot to talk about. Thankfully, 410 at Ray Ellison as you can see right there, not a lot that we're showing. Just a lot of pavement and a few folks out there getting their morning started early with us. But always make sure that you drive carefully. There are a few active construction spots that we'll continue to tell you about as morning does go on. But US 98 couples, that's one of the busiest areas in town. So we can expect to see as more people are getting their day started, they'll be making their way into the Alamo City. But right now, let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map because we're not seeing a whole lot there except for those construction spots. We'll have more on that a little bit later on. But for now, your travel times are looking like they're in great shape. All right, that journey from Bernie, 24 minutes in the eastbound lanes of I-10, 27 minutes on 281 southbound if you're traveling in from Mulverde, and it's a 25-minute drive time on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So no delays just yet, but as the morning does pick up, we can expect to see some slowdowns in the usual trouble spots, but for now, things are looking just fine. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. A man wanted in connection with the capital murder case is now off the streets. Members of the U.S. Marshals Lone Star Fugitive Task Force say they tracked him down at a motel on the city's west side. Katrina Weber is in the 1400 block of Culebra Road with a live report. And Katrina, we understand this arrest has to do with the deaths of two people. Well, that is right. Uh, the task force didn't offer a whole lot of details about this case. They were acting on behalf of the San Antonio Police Department when they tracked down that suspect at this motel across the street and then made that arrest last night. But they did mention that this had to do with the shooting of two people and then uh, the, the suspect allegedly setting fire to their home. Now, I spoke to the motel clerk who's on duty right now. He confirmed that 24-year-old Juan Antonio Reyes was arrested there last 
last night, but he walked away when I asked him for any more details. The Lone Star Fugitive Task Force mentioned that Reyes is suspected of shooting two people in their home and then starting a fire. I was able to confirm independently that he is the suspect tied to a story we covered just a couple of weeks ago. Back on July 7th, we first reported about the fire on Waverly Avenue. Firefighters found a woman and a man dead in that apartment after putting out the fire. Then they called in homicide investigators. A police later announced that day that they that those two people identified as Sergio Soto and Rachel Martinez had been murdered. Both of them shot to death before the house was set on fire. The police issued that warrant for Reyes's arrest last night, and then the task force was able to track him down and make that arrest. And we understand he is facing capital murder charges. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. After the federal right to an abortion was overturned, Democrats say they now want to make sure same-sex marriage stays in place. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the bill is facing a tough road ahead. We're working to get the necessary Senate Republican support to ensure it would pass. A bill to protect same-sex marriage by codifying it in federal law faces an uncertain future. It passed the House, but it's unclear if enough Republican senators would support it to overcome a filibuster. I doubt it. Yes, there's a vote. We'll see where the vote comes. There was pretty uh, good bipartisan support in the House. I would expect there would probably be the um, same thing you'd see in the Senate. Four Republican senators tell CNN they'd vote for the bill, eight say they'd oppose it, and 16 say they're undecided or didn't indicate support. The rest didn't respond by the deadline. Some feel the right to marriage equality is already settled. I don't think it's an issue. But lawmakers from both parties say they think the bill will get enough Republican votes. Right now, a Supreme Court ruling is what's protecting marriage equality nationwide. It uses the same legal principle that had protected abortion access on the federal level. Justice Clarence Thomas said in his opinion overturning Roe that he opposes that principle. He used the same argument to suggest revisiting the federal right to contraceptives. The House Speaker says of politicians who want to get rid of that. Do you wonder if they even know what's going on in their own homes? <laughs> I'm Amy Kiley reporting. A new CNN poll shows Americans believe the government can do more to prevent mass shootings is at a new high. Nearly 7 out of 10 U.S. adults say government and society can take action to prevent mass shootings like the one in Uvalde. The share of Americans who believe action should be taken to put a stop to mass shooting has risen over the past decade. A near universal 92 percent of Democrats support stricter gun laws. That number is at 39 percent for Republicans. Worries about family members becoming victims of gun violence troubled the majority of Americans. About 58% of U.S. citizens are at least somewhat worried about gun violence, while 26% say they are very worried. Tesla did not report a record profit Wednesday for the first time since early 2020. The electric automaker reported an adjusted income of $2.6 billion in the second quarter. It's actually down by over a billion dollars when compared to last quarter's profits. The company partially blamed COVID lockdowns in China for falling sales and profits. Its Shanghai factory stopped production for most of the quarter due to mandatory lockdowns. Still, Tesla's earnings report was better than analysts forecasted, but revenue was slightly below expectations. Well, as Mike was mentioning, yesterday was the 53rd anniversary of the first time humans landed on the moon. Now a piece of that journey to space could be yours for a few million dollars. Mike Ostrage, time to get a second mortgage, buddy. Okay. The in-flight coverall jacket worn by Buzz Aldrin himself during Apollo 11's mission is going up for auction. The jacket has several patches attached to it that include the NASA logo and Aldrin's name tag. When bidding opens July 26, it will start at a way too high for Mike, $700,000. But the jack is expected to fetch one to two million dollars. In a letter to the auction house, Aldrin wrote that crew members spent the majority of the mission wearing these jackets. Apollo 11 landed on the moon July 20th, 1969. Mike, I can't tell. Is your jaw open or are you? No, I was just wondering. I'm, I'm surprised that's not in uh, a museum somewhere. Museum yeah. or yeah. And, and how they're they have it to, to auction off. I, I do have I, a book signed by Aldrin. Well, there you, well, go. there you go. Close enough. Now you yeah. need the jacket. Okay. 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 Can you all pitch in? My birthday is coming up, so. <laughs> I think it would take a, <clears throat> a lot of us to pitch in. Elon Paul. Musk, okay. if you're watching exactly. right now, Mike Ostrage is your new Aww. best friend. 538, about 81 degrees.
one bite at a time. One bite at a time. That's right. Speaking of bite, you still ahead ready for a cheesy martini. We're going to tell you about Velveeta's latest drink option. Up next, how Texas researchers are looking for a new way to help people better recover from muscle loss due to accidents, injuries, and other medical conditions. Expecting another warm out day there. We're starting at 81 degrees already. We'll be right back. 541 on your Thursday morning. Every year, 4.5 million people undergo reconstructive surgeries. And even though surgeons can help many times, the damaged area will never fully heal. But as Ursula Perry reports, researchers in Texas are working to grow new muscles. Car accidents, sports injuries, cancer, war. Many times, surgeries to reconstruct new tissue helps the look, but... It's not very effective, so they don't recover the additional function of that muscle. Now Rice University bioengineers are creating scaffolds that are made out of decellularized skeletal muscle. Our goal here is to not just create new tissue, but to create new functional tissue. It's the latest step in true tissue regeneration, using natural materials, not synthetic ones. Researchers start with the muscle taken from a rabbit, and they break it down into proteins to create the matrix of nanofibers. That is what the scaffold looks like in the lab. Scientists can grow it as large or as small as needed. We would be able to implant this mesh directly because it already has the proteins and biochemical cues that we would find in muscle. It should ideally recruit cells from your body to help come in and fill that gap and to form new muscle fibers. In rats, it took just eight weeks for researchers to see substantial new muscle fiber formation. And once enough muscle is formed, that scaffold, it's gonna degrade and then be replaced by new muscle. Researchers say using the natural materials is important because natural materials will help the tissue become more functional. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Time right now, 543, 81 degrees. And coming up next, the San Antonio Humane Society is here with a furry friend that needs to be adopted. Well, it is superhero time <laughs> for the pups. And our yes. own superhero <laughs> from the San Antonio Humane Society <laughs> Gibbons here. And who's the one all dressed up? Oh my gosh, this is Piglet. She is our superhero. <laughs> she is superwoman. Uh, she is a two month old retriever mix. Uh, just really sweet, calm. Um, of course, as you can tell by the paws, yeah, yeah. she's gonna be big. <laughs> but for being that young, and she's just like, okay, hold me. She's I'm, like, I'm yeah, fine. I'm Checking just Checking out chill. her buddy off camera right there. Exactly. But look at this little baby. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Hi, sweetums. Say hello. How are Good you? Good morning. Kissy? Aww, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, besides playing dress up, what else is going on? So we are partnering with the Super Pets movie, which airs on July the 29th. It's in theaters. So adopters can come in um, and while supplies last, they get this really cool backpack. And we wanna see your pets and how they're dressed up as superheroes. So we've got a great social media pro, uh, promo going on. Send us your pets. Um, and all of the information is found on our Facebook page. There's so, goodies in here too. Yeah, there's really oh, cool. cool things for the kids. Yeah. It's a great movie, even though it's and, a kid's and, movie. And you get you get ears, dog ears? <laughs> you get ears, yes. Cool. Adults wanna see it. I wanna go see this movie. It looks really cute. It looks like, yeah, it's fun. I mean, yeah. great, great way to beat the heat in the summer time as well. So, well, if you'd like more information about all the superheroes and this little laid back superhero right here, bet you she's going to be active in the backyard though. Yes. 4804, oh, the softest fur too. 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Well, pop your collar and stay classy. Velveeta is getting you ready for a <laughs> cheesy martini. Take a look at this concoction. You're looking at the Veltini. It's a very unique take on a classic martini made with Velveeta infused vodka. Then it's mixed with olive brine and vermouth. Garnish includes Velveeta stuff, olives, and jumbo shells. You can get this drink at select BLT steakhouses out on the East Coast. None here, though. Velveeta is also selling a limited number of kits, so you can make it at home. No, thank you. No. <laughs> can we say no, thank you? You can say no, thank you. But Ew, yeah. Do we, do we at least have a sip? Um, Steven, would you try this? I know you're a martini. Uh, yeah, I like espresso martinis, not okay. a cheesy martini. And by the way, I like Gruyere cheese, not cheddar cheese. So just throwing Got that it. out there as So well. that's a no. That's a big no. 
And, a big no. <laughs> all right, uh, but you know what? Traffic is not a go here. Let's go ahead and get a look at Transkai 35 and State Highway 46. This is an area that we have shown you plenty of times. There is some work that has taken place here that has led to a slowdown, and it looks like that could be in the northbound lanes. And right now, I'm actually looking for some of those alternative routes for you. But let's go ahead and show you what it's looking like at this hour. We bring you in. This is just a little bit north of New Braunfels, as you can see, actually in New Braunfels, pardon me. Uh, and you can see that stretch of red that is building along the northbound lanes of 35, and that is because we are seeing paving work. That paving work, I actually thought I had that slide on there, should be wrapping around 5 this morning, but of course, we're seeing some delays already, so we have to keep an eye on it, and we're going to bring you some updates. And as I mentioned, we are looking for some of those alternative routes, so just make sure that you plan ahead, maybe look for some alternative routes of your own, because right now, it's not a good place to be, especially if you're trying to make your way north of New Braunfels, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Maybe that. a martini with your mac and cheese made with no, milk. No, 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 no. That's not a good combination. <laughs> no. No. Uh, yeah. Hey. No. Mike, look over your shoulder. I love this Aww. picture. Yeah. I love the names. Molly Moo and Betty Davis. <laughs> That's just and what great. do they say? The heat is utterly awful. Uh, mm -hmm. Appropriate. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. And you. Yeah. Find some shade, ladies, and uh, yeah, it's the best thing to do because, of course, all, you know, i got to emphasize all the numbers we talk about, temperatures, uh, heat index, everything, those numbers are in the shade. You're in the direct sun, and then you're not only feeling the air temperature, but you're also getting heat heated up by the sun. We do have a few clouds hanging around this morning and that combined with the very high humidity is helping to keep temperatures up. And of course, we do have a heat index right now. 88 at Castroville, 87 at the airport Canyon Lake and uh, yeah, Bernie Stage and Lost Maples, the only two reporting areas that are not in the 80s right now as far as what it feels like when you step outside. Of course, we did hit 104 yesterday, set a new record, uh, 109 Catula, Laredo, and everybody with uh, just a couple of exceptions were up in the triple digits yesterday. And we are going to be up in triple digits again today, down a couple of notches, but still very, very hot, still seven degrees above normal here in town. And of course, then, yes, we do have to figure, figure in the uh, humidity, which will be sticking around a little bit later on this afternoon. We're going to stay in the 80s, just bottoming out at 80 degrees this morning, and then add 10 to that by 11, and add another 10 to that, and then some by later on this afternoon. So we will top off 102. That's going to be tying the record for today. When you factor in the humidity, we will have those heat index readings up in the 105 or higher range. So that's, again, where your body just really has a tough time cooling itself. Our AC has a tough time cooling down your, your house as well. All right, tropics and, you know, we talk about the consistency with this forecast. Nothing has changed each and every day with the hot temperatures and nothing has changed in the tropics either. There is nothing out there as of right now. A couple of clouds uh, way over in the mid-Atlantic, but look at how clear it is over most of the Atlantic Ocean. And Hurricane Center is not raising eyebrows at anything as of right now. And... Throughout the rest of the week, that high is going to remain in control. It It is slightly weaker than yesterday, which is why it's 102 versus 104. We'll stay about 100, 101 or so uh, going in through the weekend, going in through next week. And this thing is just covering the southern two-thirds of our country. And that's why it's so hot, not only here, but also uh, well up into the, the Central Plains states and even New England but they at least get breaks every once in a while. And that high is going to remain in control. And this is um, known in the summertime as the Bermuda High because it basically stretches from the island of Bermuda all the way across the southeastern United States. The only hope by the middle part of next week is with this in position here to the somewhat east of us, northeast of us, we will get the flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. And I know I've been saying this each and every day. That's kind of wishful thinking at this point. Um, perhaps something late next week. But until then, it's just going to stay very hot. 92, mostly sunny skies, and 102 ties the record today. This will be day number 42, by the way, of triple digit temperatures. Heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until 8 o'clock tonight and stays very consistent all the way through the weekend and in through next week. Hot, sunny, no rain. Well, we know what we're in for. We, we know what to expect. Yes. We know that we're settling in for the long haul here. Yeah. Again, it's not even August yet. It is not even the historically hottest time of the year yet. Well, you Just know. Just thought I'd throw that in there. But maybe we'll see changes then. I agree with you. <laughs>
Never, Hopefully. never more did we need your positive spin no. <laughs> than we do right now. <laughs> 553, 81 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, 184, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 0, 0704, Fireball 9. Your cash five numbers 12, 13, 29, 32, 33, Lotto, Texas 12, 20, 29, 33, 37, 48, and Powerball 10, 20, 23, 49, 65, which would be like degrees would be awesome. Powerball 22, Power Play 3. Coming up here on GMA, we'll begin with the heat. We are in an excessive heat warning here at Lake Mead, but all the way across the nation, there are heat advisories and serious and dangerous longevity of heat. Even in the Northeast, we could see seven days in a row in New York City and other spots, which hasn't happened in some places since 2013. We also, of course, here at Lake Mead, have to talk about drought. We have brand new images from NASA, the boat behind me, just in the last couple of months has been exposed because they are losing so much water so quickly. This water that services more than 40 million Americans and has a lot to do with our food prices. That coming up right here on GMA. How are you staying cool? Um, anything with water, really, yeah. because that's the only way you can stay cool. Yeah, water seems to be one of the best solutions to survive these 100 degree plus days. Kids suited up to enjoy the splash pad at the Pearl downtown yesterday. Even some parents joined in. On our website, we have a list of free splash pads you can visit throughout our area. Just head over to ksat.com. Much more ahead in the next hour of GMSA, including the very latest in the heat wave hitting much of the United States this week. And here at home, we're going to tell you why the San Antonio Food Bank is seeing record numbers of people lining up. We'll tell you why and how you can help. And the barrels are out with the flashing lights, 35 at State Highway 46. Stephen Cavazos is keeping an eye on things. We'll be back. New this morning, U.S. Marshals have arrested man on capital murder charges. We'll have all the details. I'm ABC's Emlyn in Washington. The January 6th House Select Committee holds another primetime hearing tonight, detailing minute by minute what former President Trump was doing during the riot. What the committee could show that the public has not seen before. The details coming up. We're expecting another triple digit day today, but for now, we're 81 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, July 21st. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having an awesome week. Um, I'm losing track of where we are on the triple digit days. I think we're in the 40s now. I think so. And you know we're in trouble when we've only gotten down to about 80 degrees in the overnight hours, Mike Osterhage. Yep. And 41 days 41. so far this year. 41. So yes, we moved or tied for third place as far as the most in a calendar year. And today we'll just continue to rack up and move into sole possession of third place. So, so this is going to be a banner year, yeah. isn't it? Yes, indeed. And uh, yesterday we set a record and today we're going to tie a record and then also move up in the records as far as the number of triple digit days. Some clouds hanging around here this morning. So it's clouds as well as all the humidity, which is helping to keep temperatures up so warm. We're still six degrees above normal right now. 82 Castroville, 81 Canyon Lake, the airport Stinson, and even just, I mean, upper 70s. Everybody's roughly five degrees, five, six degrees above the respective normal low temperatures. And here's part of the reason along with the clouds. But look at all these numbers which are up a few notches. The dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere. A couple of days ago, we were in the 60s and then kept going up a degree or so each and every day. And now everybody is up into the 70s. And we're talking when you get 74 and higher than that, again, it's just like a, a wet towel that uh, you run into when you walk outside. So heat index readings, 88 Castroville, 87 at Canyon Lake, as well as in New Braunfels. Mold is on the low side and we're only going to be dropping down to right around 80 this morning. We'll have some clouds hanging around here and then more sunshine obviously later on today. That's going to heat things up very quickly already up into the low 90s at noon like we've been the past few days and then we will top off at 102. That ties today's record and like I said, this will be day number 42 of triple digit temperatures and we also have the heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until 8 o'clock tonight. Anything as far as changes coming up? 
this weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, been pretty quiet. It has, Mike. Let's go ahead and get a look here at 410 at Ray Ellison. You can see that right there, it's a quiet shot, as Mike was mentioning. But other areas, particularly off of 35 in New Braunfels, we are seeing some slowdowns. But uh, just got an update from our friends at Transguide. It looks like some of those crews that were out there working on the pavement, looks like they could be wrapping up. But US 90, a couple's always a pretty busy spot around this time. So just make sure you prepare for that if you're making your way into the Alamo City. We'll check those travel times in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about 35 because we saw a little bit of red that was building there along State Highway 46 near FM 306. Uh, that is because crews were working on the pavement there, but it does appear based off the corner of my eye and what we're seeing at Trans Guide, it looks like they are wrapping up. So that is some good news and we are no longer seeing any slowdowns right there on our map. So just remember to drive safe and if you see those crews out there, make sure to move over or slow down. They are working to make the roads a better place. All right, let's check those travel times. 37. If you're coming in from Pleasanton, it's pretty pleasant in the northbound lanes. 28 minutes at this hour, half an hour coming in from Highway 90 in Castroville. But you can see that traffic is already starting to build in that trans guide camera and the arrival from Lytle is going to be about 16 minutes right now. So it's a good time to hit the roads, but just remember to drive safe. Still pretty dark out there getting a bit busier at 410 at Evers. We're going to have more updates and more updates on construction spots. Make sure to have your phones handy. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force announcing the capture and arrest of a capital murder suspect. 24-year-old Juan Antonio Reyes was arrested by the Marshals Service last night on charges involving a capital murder. Reyes wanted by SAPD after a warrant was issued for his arrest Tuesday. Reports stated that Reyes is accused of killing two people in their home, then setting that home on fire. After a thorough investigation, the task force says they tracked down Reyes to a motel in the 1400 block of Culebra Road. Reyes was arrested and taken into custody without incident. He is currently being held in custody at the Bear County Jail. A federal grand jury has returned at least two indictments in the migrant tragedy in San Antonio. A trial date has not been set. 46-year-old Amedo Zamorano Jr. and 28-year-old Christian Martinez are facing human smuggling charges. One count involved death, the other is serious injury. Both suspects are still in federal custody without bond. Investigators say they were involved in transporting dozens of migrants in the back of an 18-wheeler. 53 died after they were found trapped in the back of that big rig last month. San Antonio police have a mystery on their hands. A woman's body found in front of an abandoned home on San Luis Street on the west side. Now investigators are trying to answer two questions. Who is she and who left her there? A witness called police saying they saw someone drop the body around 2 yesterday afternoon. It's unclear if the woman was shot or stabbed. If you have information can help in this case, call San Antonio police. Well, today is the fourth day of the Estrada trial. The family of Domingo Pesqueda says she was run over and killed, and her husband, David Estrada, is accused of doing it. During proceedings yesterday, a family member said she was also abused weeks before she died. The victim's sister took the stand. She told the jury she saw Estrada repeatedly punch his wife outside a family birthday party back in 2020. Two weeks later, Pesqueda was killed. Police say Estrada claimed someone else ran her over. They say he changed the story after seeing photos of blood and damage to his truck. And then he tried to kind of blame her for not jumping out of the way. As she should have known. Estrada is free on bond while his trial takes place. He faces up to 99 years in prison if convicted. And now to the January 6th House Select Committee's hearing tonight. It is expected to be a dramatic three-hour case detailing minute by minute what former President Donald Trump did the day of the insurrection. ABC's M. Wynn has more. Good morning. Tonight, we're expecting to learn more about then-President Trump's frame of mind during the Capitol insurrection, including what he allegedly didn't want to say in the speech he delivered the day after. Under scrutiny in tonight's primetime January 6th House Select Committee hearing, the 187 minutes the panel says then-President Donald Trump refused to call off a violent attack by his mob of supporters at the U.S. Capitol. So the American public need to know exactly what was happening. The next day, Trump released a three-minute pre-recorded message to condemn the attack. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. But behind the scenes, a different story. ABC News learning the committee is expected to show some of the outtakes they obtained from that pre-recorded message, showing a president struggling to say the election was over and to condemn rioters, according to sources. 
We have just been through an intense election, and emotions are high. But now, tempers must be cooled and calm restored. The president, sources say, only taped the message under immense pressure from aides, advising him to do so to end any discussions about the 25th Amendment, which is used to replace a president. Tonight's hearing also comes as the Secret Service says it was only able to recover a single text exchange from January 5th and 6th after the committee subpoenaed the agency. Any other messages, the Secret Service says, were deleted during a device upgrade on January 27th. Officials now saying this could be a violation of the Federal Records Act. Former President Trump has called the committee's investigation rigged and one-sided. The panel says it plans to have an interim report out by September. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Top of your consumer headlines, home sales sliding again. Experts say existing home sales fell 5.4% in June compared to the month before. That was the fifth straight month of declining sales. But home prices still going up. National median hitting $416,000, up more than 13% compared to a year ago. United Airlines is posting profits of $329 million in the second quarter with travelers packing planes. But that fell well below Wall Street's expectations thanks to sky-high fuel prices. Meanwhile, on the roads, we're still being hit by high fuel prices, specifically high diesel prices up 68% from a year ago to a national average of 550 a gallon and truckers are being forced to pass those higher costs along eventually to consumers. And here at home or people are going to the San Antonio Food Bank. And the lines there getting longer as more people face rent, utility and gas price hikes. Summer's already busy since kids are out of school and families are serving more meals at home at inflation and that has stretched families past their financial limit. We typically see about 90,000 people a week. That number has now gone over 100,000 people a week looking for food. So to put that into perspective, during the pandemic shutdown, the food bank served 120,000 people a week. Many of those people could not work. This time, many of the people at the food bank do have jobs. They're just not making enough. If you'd like to help the San Antonio Food Bank, you can make a donation or sign up to volunteer at the number on your screen, 337-3663. We have all this information posted for you right over on ksat.com. And if you're struggling to make ends meet, we have some tips that can help you cut those costs and save some money. That's coming up on GMSA at 630. Right now, 10 minutes past the hour, 81 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, the very latest on the heat wave hitting the U.S. and the deadly lightning strike in Georgia that killed one soldier and injured nine others. Outside with live cam, we've made it to Thursday as we take a live look at San Antonio International Airport. Waiting for that sunrise, you're watching GMSA. Good morning, everyone. Time now is just almost 7, 6.15. Let's get a look at the roadways I-10 at Hackberry. Things are moving just fine there, but as we get a look around town, we're starting to see traffic that's picking up a little bit more. So just remember to drive safe and plan your commute ahead of time. Earlier, we talked about some of the work that was taking place over here off of I-35 in the northbound lanes paving work. Now that is wrapped up already at FM 306, uh, but we're going to continue to see that work taking place at least up until tomorrow. So let's go ahead and talk about what you'll be seeing there because this is overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning along I-35 in Comal County. Alternating southbound main lanes and ramps are going to be impacted during this time from Guadalupe River to FM 306. But of course, that information is on our website. So grab those phones. As I mentioned earlier, you can scan this QR code, as you know, and that'll take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. Has a list of all the closures, not just there on 35, but other areas where we can see some closures. So just make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. And don't forget, those are listed at the bottom of the page. So if you're on your phone, scroll to the bottom of the page. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. It's only in the low 80s this morning. I know. Yeah. <laughs> After 104, we have not cooled down that much. And the reason for that basically is the fact that we've got some clouds over there. They tend to act like a blanket. And then also all the humidity, which is actually higher than it has been the past couple of mornings. So we're at 81 right now, 82 down the road in Catula, New Braunfels at 81. And then look at that top number, 2.73. That's up from the past couple of days. A lot more. And it's even more humid in some spots on top of that. Wind out of the uh, south primarily at about 10 miles per hour. A bit of a breeze throughout the day. All right, this guy's got the right idea. He is just should be in the bird bath, but the uh, little squirrel splooting. And I did not know 
had never heard the word splooting before. Have you ever heard that? I, oh, yeah, Yesterday. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'd heard it years ago. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. With, yeah. Their legs just splayed yeah. kind of mm -hmm. backwards like that. But you had a pup yesterday doing the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Squirrels and dogs like to do it. Uh, I haven't seen anybody we know splooting. Yeah. No, no humans. Lay on the floor and we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, 86 is the heat index right now. 87 Stinson and still feels like 88 degrees at Castroville. And we will only drop down to 80 again because of the cloud cover and the humidity out there. And then more sunshine, obviously, late morning. That gets us up into the low 90s already at noon. And we will top off at 102 today. Yeah, it is lower than yesterday's 104. We'll take little small steps, but uh, that will also be a uh, new record temperature. All right. Now, as far as the uh, Atlantic hurricane season, we haven't had anything out there. Oops, that just put that on the floor. Thank you very much. Hopefully it didn't break. Um, it is usually no, I don't. OK, thank right. you very much. No problem. Um, it usually doesn't really get going for about another month and a half until the uh, the middle or the first week of September, first, second week of September, when usually the activity does peak and then tends to drop off. But again, there is nothing going on out there as of right now, according to the uh, National Hurricane Center, not even anything in the next 48 hours that raises an eyebrow as far as they are concerned. So it's just uh, maybe it will get going once we get further on into the season. Of course, we're only uh, just over a month and a half into the hurricane season and still it goes through the end of November 92 at noon. Mostly sunny skies. High temperature today does make it up to 102 and that will tie today's record. Yesterday we set the record and of course we've got the heat advisory goes into effect at noon till 8 o'clock basically eastern half of our viewing area, but even if you're not under a formal heat advisory, obviously you want to definitely take it easy and we're going to continue to rack up triple digit temperatures all the way through the weekend into next week. We tied for third place yesterday as far as the most in a calendar year and we will move into sole possession of third place and continue going all the way into the middle part of next week. All right, you may have heard the news. There was a deadly lightning strike at an army base in Georgia. One soldier was killed, nine injured, and that storm is kind of a rarity given the fact that the heat wave is affecting most of the country. More than two thirds of Americans are experiencing heat of at least 90 degrees all the way from California up to New England. And for many of them, there's no relief inside kind of the situation we're in. ABC's Christy Aletto has details. This morning, the extreme weather gripping much of the country turning deadly on a U.S. Army base. Authorities say 10 soldiers were hit by lightning at Fort Gordon in Georgia, one of them dying from the injuries. 29 states are under excessive heat warnings and heat advisories today. Experts say climate change has made rare heat waves three to five degrees warmer. And in the southwest, scientists believe the worst drought in 12 centuries is now underway. These new satellite images show the rapidly decreasing water levels in Lake Mead, which provides water to 25 million people. Right now, those uh, outflows are exceeding the inflows and the lake levels are going down, just like your bank account would decrease. Meanwhile, Americans' electric bills are predicted to increase by 20 percent this summer compared to last year to an average of $540, largely due to soaring natural gas prices. And in New York City, the power company is asking customers to keep thermostats at 70 eight degrees to conserve energy. On Wednesday, President Biden announced new executive actions to address rising temperatures, including $2.3 billion for stronger infrastructure to withstand climate change and funding to help low income families improve air conditioning in their homes. I can do more because not enough is being done now. Christy Aletto, ABC News, New York. 619, about 80 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. Postal Service is going more electric. We're going to have more details. We hit the bike trails every weekend. Shingles doesn't care. I grow all my own vegetables. Shingles doesn't care. We've still got the best moves you've ever seen. Good for you, but Shingles doesn't care. Because one in three people will get shingles. You need protection. But no matter how healthy you feel, your immune system declines as you age, increasing your risk for getting shingles. So what can protect you? Shingrix protects. 
you can protect yourself from shingles with a vaccine proven to be over 90% effective. Shingrix is a vaccine used to prevent shingles in adults 50 years and older. Shingrix does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients or to a previous dose. An increased risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome was observed after getting Shingrix. Fainting can also happen. The most common side effects are pain, redness and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, tiredness, headache, shivering, fever and upset stomach. Ask your pharmacist or doctor about Shingrix. Shingles doesn't care, but you should. Coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSAT 12, a mother who turned her son into police after she suspected he was planning a mass shooting is speaking about, about why she did it. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has those details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an exclusive interview with a mother who made the difficult decision to report her own son to the police. Nicole Schubert says she found his journal detailing plans of a horrific killing spree that was to begin at home. What's it like for a mother to read something like that? Devastating. That's my child. I, I gave birth to him. You know, it hurts a lot. It still hurts. Schubert calling police just hours later. Your first instinct is, as a parent is to protect your child. But at that point, I felt like if he is actually going to do these things, he would be safer in jail. And coming up at 7 a.m., her message for other parents. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. In today's Tech Bytes, more electric vehicles are coming to the U.S. Postal Service. The agency says 40% of new delivery trucks will be electric, a dramatic increase from the initial plan to make just 10% of the fleet electric. The Postal Service made the change to comply with the Biden administration's climate goals. And DoorDash has launched a two-step ID verification process for alcohol delivery. Users first have to upload a photo of their ID to the DoorDash app. Then drivers will scan the ID when they get there to make a delivery. 624, 80 degrees. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're going backstage of the newest musical performance at the Public Theater of San Antonio. Yeah, we'll hear from some of the cast, the director of the music, they'll tell us about the power of love and what we as a community can take away from that show. That story and more today on GMSA at 9. And much more to come on GMSA, including a massive wildfire or the massive wildfires that continue to burn across parts of the Lone Star State. We will have the very latest. And new this morning, questions remain after a man is shot in the park on the city's north side. We're going to have the latest on his condition. Checking the roads with Transkai. 281 at St. Mary's looks really good right now, but that could change in a matter of minutes. Stephen Cavazos will have an update coming up. This West Side Motel was the site for the takedown of a capital murder suspect. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about his arrest and the case involved coming up. Plus, lots of questions this morning after a man was shot on the city's northeast side. We'll tell you everything we know so far. And are you looking for work? An area school district is looking to fill several open spots. We're going to tell you about it. Outside with live cam, Mike says we got up to 104 yesterday, but that pales in comparison to other spots in the state of Texas and even around the country. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. It is July 21st. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what a week so far. Uh, triple digits every day. Yeah, Mike, some places got up to 115. I think places like Wichita Falls yesterday. Yeah, and even in our area, uh -huh. you know, approaching 110. Now, it won't be quite as hot, but yeah, and the difference being, you know, for a lot of folks up in the Northeast, especially when they're in the upper 90s, low 100s, you know, it's kind of like us being on the cold side. They're, they're not used to it, and and uh, yeah, it's getting, you know, and Steph was saying what a week it's been, what a year it's been, because we are tied for third as far as the most triple digit days. We hit that yesterday at 41, and we're going to continue to add to that today and the rest of the week. 81 degrees right now, so we've got all these clouds out there. We've got a lot of humidity. This dew point is way up there in the 70s, and so that means there's a lot of humidity. And Humid air holds the moisture in a lot more. Clouds act like a blanket, and that's why we're not cooling down and we won't drop below 80 this morning. It feels like 86 out there, 85 Canyon Lake, 88 in Castroville. 87 right now is the heat index at both Stinson as well as New Braunfels. Mold is on the low side. Updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. It is warmer. It is even more humid than the past couple of mornings. We will make it up to 102 today, so 
you know, down a couple of degrees. Hopefully, you know, maybe your AC can get a slight bit of a break today, but that will tie the record today after setting it yesterday, and that's going to be day number 42 so far this year of triple digits and down a degree or two over the next couple of days. I mean, overall pretty much consistent low hundreds all the way through the weekend and just basically consistently hot throughout the rest of the forecast. Speaking of hot, there is a heat advisory goes into effect at noon up until eight o'clock tonight for the eastern about uh, half two thirds of the area. And just because you don't have a heat advisory formally posted, obviously in the hill country, you want to take it easy. Details on the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, you've had it fairly easy in your corner of the studio. This yeah, morning. I have. It's been nice over here, Mike. Let's go ahead and get a look at the roadways. Uh, you know, I always try to tell myself I'm excited when we get to talk about the roads, especially when they are calm like this. And so if you're excited for the Thursday for today, then you're going to have a lot more excitement on the roads because there's not really a lot to see out there. Just some calm traffic so you can enjoy your commute wherever that's going to take you. But right now, 37 at Pecan Valley, just getting a tad bit busier right now would be a perfect time to get that day started out there. So just be careful. We take you to the map and we really don't see any issues to report. As Mike was mentioning, it has been a quiet morning as we give you a wide view of the map. Just a lot of those active construction spots, but nothing really is going to hinder that drive time at this point. So as I mentioned, perfect time to get the day started, but we'll keep a close eye on things. It's a really short traffic hit here, but 281 at San Pedro. Things are off. People are moving just fine. We're going to have more updates in the next few minutes. Guys, thank you, sir. We are learning more details about the arrest of a suspect in a local capital murder case. That arrest made by members of the U.S. Marshals Lone Star Fugitive Task Force. They say they found the suspect hiding at a motel on the west side. Katrina Weber is there in the 1400 block of Culebra Road with a live report. Katrina, we understand you also have some new information about the case itself. Well, that's right. I was able to get a copy of the arrest affidavit in this case. It lays out most of the details about what happened in this neighborhood two weeks ago. Now, uh, we were able to confirm uh, that the U.S. Marshal's Office, the uh, Lone Star Fugitive Task Force, rather, moved in and made that arrest late last night. And they did that at that motel right there across the street. Now, in a news release, the task force announced that it had arrested 24-year-old Juan Antonio Reyes last night in connection with an SAPD capital murder case. It says Reyes is accused of shooting two people, then setting fire to their home. Well, the affidavit confirms it was a case that we covered back on July 7th. Firefighters put out a fire at an apartment in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue, then found a man and woman dead inside. And we noted at the time that they had called in homicide investigators. Police announced later that day that those two people had, in fact, been shot. Now, the affidavit reveals the victims were shot in the head, and it tells how police figured out who did it. It says they found surveillance video showing three people coming and going from the apartment. And the affidavit says relatives identified one of them as Reyes. It seems, though, that there could be more arrests to come. Now, according to the affidavit, Reyes is related to both of those people who he is accused of murdering. Family members identify them as, uh, as those victims, as Sergio Soto and Rachel Martinez. But according to the affidavit, the medical examiner still has not made a positive ID on the woman who was killed. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police are trying to figure out where and why a man was shot overnight. The situation ended after midnight on the northeast side in the 4600 block of Goldfield near I-35 and Riddiman. SAPD says a 19-year-old man was shot in the arm and was not cooperating with police afterward. Police say he managed to drive to the Industry Park Drive area where he called for help and was eventually taken to the hospital. SAPD also says a friend who was with the victim lied about his identity, so officers detained him. And the man is recovering after a separate shooting incident. This one happening around 1230 this morning on Blanco Road, uh, just a few blocks away from the area of San Pedro Springs Park. And that's where the victim told San Pedro Park police that he was shot in the hip, but he couldn't. He couldn't tell officers any suspect information. Now we're going to bring you updates on this story as new information becomes available. Tensions remain high in Uvalde as more reports highlight the failures of law enforcement. 
The community continues to demand School District Police Chief Pete Adedondo be stripped of his title. According to the Associated Press, a Valley's top school official recommended the firing Adedondo yesterday. So now the school board says they will consider the move in a special meeting coming up Saturday. But some people still are not satisfied. It feels good because at least, you know, they're getting, you know, somewhere, you know, they're starting with someone, but they should have done that a long time ago. A very long time ago. The only reason they're doing it is because they're feeling the heat. School officials did not comment any further on the special meeting. The House January 6th committee will hold its final hearing of the summer. Tonight's hearing aims to vividly make the case that former President Donald Trump's lies about a stolen election fueled the grisly Capitol attack last year. The panel will delve into 187 minutes in which it says Trump did nothing to stop the violence. A two-hour hearing will feature live testimony from two former White House aides. Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin says it will be, quote, a profound moment of reckoning for America. Well, after the federal right to an abortion was overturned, Democrats say they want to make sure same-sex marriage stays in place. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the bill is facing a tough road ahead. We're working to get the necessary Senate Republican support to ensure it would pass. A bill to protect same-sex marriage by codifying it in federal law faces an uncertain future. It passed the House, but it's unclear if enough Republican senators would support it to overcome a filibuster. I doubt it. If there's a vote, we'll see where the vote comes. There was pretty uh, good bipartisan support in the House. I would expect there would probably be the um, same thing you'd see in the Senate. Four Republican senators tell CNN they'd vote for the bill, eight say they'd oppose it, and 16 say they're undecided or didn't indicate support. The rest didn't respond by the deadline. Some feel the right to marriage equality is already settled. I don't think it's an issue. But lawmakers from both parties say they think the bill will get enough Republican votes. Right now, a Supreme Court ruling is what's protecting marriage equality nationwide. It uses the same legal principle that had protected abortion access on the federal level. Justice Clarence Thomas said in his opinion overturning Roe that he opposes that principle. He used the same argument to suggest revisiting the federal right to contraceptives. The House Speaker says of politicians who want to get rid of that. Do you wonder if they even know what's going on in their own homes? <laughs> I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Americans will have access to more monkeypox vaccines. However, experts say it's still not enough for everyone who is eligible to receive one. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services just announced the government distributed another 59,000 doses of vaccine to states and other jurisdictions over the past week. That brings the distribution to about 191,000 doses. HHS expects more than 700,000 doses to be delivered by the Strategic National Stockpile in the coming weeks. And sad news out of Alabama this morning, where a former lion from the San Antonio Zoo named Josh killed a lioness named Achille at the Birmingham Zoo. The two cats were slowly introduced on Monday, and within minutes, Josh fatally wounded Achille. No vis visitors were there during the day. The zoo had been closed for this meetup. So officials in Birmingham said the staff is devastated by the loss of one of their favorite animals. They also said Josh will continue to receive care. One other news, about 10 wildfires continue to burn across the state of Texas this morning. One of the biggest is that Chalk Mountain fire in North Texas, east of Stephenville. And right now it's burning more than 6,000 acres and is only 10% contained. Another 6,000 acre fire near Wichita Falls is also burning. However, it's about 98% contained. The closest one to us, the Honey Creek Fire, that's burning about 300 acres west of San Antonio in Uvalde County, just west of Garner State Park. It's about 60% contained, <coughs> according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. Are you looking for work? Judson ISD needs to fill several positions and they're holding a job fair later today. The district is looking for teachers, teacher aides, substitutes, bus drivers, hall monitors, custodians, and child nutrition staff, to name a few. On-site interviews will be held and if you're interested, you should bring a current copy of your resume. The hiring event happening this afternoon from 1 to 5 at Judson High School. Time now, 640 and 80 degrees for now. Still ahead on the morning show, some inflation proof tips to help you try to save a little cash.
welcome back at 643. If you're looking for essential items to cost less anytime soon, you may be waiting a while. And that's because experts say inflation is actually at its highest level in 40 years and things could get worse before summer is over. So here are some things you can do to save. So if you're looking to save at the grocery store, think about signing up for a grocery rewards card that can help you save some dollars without having to clip coupons. And be on the lookout for buy one, get one deals. If you're feeling pain at the pump, try comparing uh, real-time gas prices on apps like Waze or Gas Buddy. The free and rely on users to keep station-specific gas price information up to date and hopefully accurate. Gas Buddy says Monday tends to be the cheapest day of the week to refuel. And there's an easy way to cut costs on power too. According to the Department of Energy, 78 degrees is a sweet spot for air conditioners to balance energy savings and comfort. That could save you up to $20 a month. And lastly, this is a good one. Unsubscribe from many apps or subscriptions you don't use anymore. The average person spends $273 a month on apps. If you haven't used a certain streaming service or that fitness app in a month or more, cancel it. You can always resubscribe if you change your mind. Yeah, good advice just to pay attention there. And I think, believe it or not, there's an app for that. To, that will go, to track your apps. That will go yes. hunt down your apps your, and, and uh, 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 subscriptions. Yes. Does yeah. it cost you're money? Right. Pro probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. It's like a push. Yeah. 645. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I spent some time doing that actually the other day. Just unsubscribe, unsubscribe. I mean. Kind of weeding out. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how much you saved? Uh, not yet. Hopefully you'll find out in the next month or so. I just did that the other day. But, you know, right now, today, traffic's looking pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and get a quick look at TransGuide 410 at Ray Ellison. We are seeing just some quiet areas, but other spots. Traffic's picking up. 281 at St. Mary's still looks pretty good. But just remember, drive safe. It's early enough, but early enough to where we start to see some issues because it's morning rush. So keep that in mind before you head out the door. Thankfully, as we take you to the map, just a lot of green and we see some construction spots. And as a reminder for our friends, Right there at Highway 90, some barrier work will continue to take place. That should be wrapping up tomorrow, according to TxDOT. But we will see crews out there from 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. During that time, it's a pretty busy hour, so we will likely see some delays. Make sure you plan your commute accordingly. Single main lane and exit ramp closures is what drivers can expect in both directions. That's east and west right there at Montgomery Road. But of course, that information on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. But back here, traffic moving just fine at Trent guide will continue to watch these roads closely guys thank you steven you know thank speaking you. of saving uh, savings i had to get gassy the other day and at least it was lower than like two phillips ago R right that's yeah, good. I saved about yeah. 17 about 17 bucks lower yeah i know that's comparing 104 yesterday 102 today i mean it's still <laughs> well, outrageous you know yeah every little bit helps right so, yeah. exactly exactly but still you know it's like double of what it was two and a half years ago to fill up anyway i love this picture that is so pretty and it's gorgeous, gorgeous horses. Beautiful couple enjoying the lovely sunset. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for that KSAT Connect picture. All right, looking outside right now and there's our morning clouds hanging around. You can sort of see that that hazy look out there with all the humidity. And that's one of the reasons why we've got temperatures that are staying in the low 80s right now. That's all we've dropped down to because of the cloud cover, because of the humidity. Humidity doesn't uh, let you cool down as much and the clouds act obviously act like a blanket. So, of course, we set the uh, record yesterday and every day this month has been above normal. It was only on the 15th that we were not at 100 degrees that ended that streak of 14 days in a row, but every single one of those days. So the average uh, temperature 80 basically 90 degrees, more than uh, five and a half degrees above average. And of course, the forecast is for above normal and triple digit temperatures all the way through at least to about this time next week. Feels like 86 right now at the airport, 88 Castroville and 85, both Stinson and Pleasanton. Like I said, we're only going to drop as low as 80 this morning and we've got those morning clouds hanging around, then 92 at noon. And yeah, that sun comes out and it just heats up quickly, already up to 100 at three o'clock top off at 102. So again, we're going to be in the 100 degree range for a good three, three and a half, maybe close to, to four hours. And it will feel like it's 100 degrees 
a lot longer than that. We'll have a heat index uh, at peak today of 107, 110 down the road in uh, right around Catula. And as far as radar, there are satellite. You can see a couple of these clouds hanging around here, this darker shade of gray. And around the country, yeah, they've been talking about some hot temperatures up to the north, but at least they get a front to move on through. So that was one of the benefits up there in the summertime up around the Great Lakes where you get those heat waves. And then look at that. It's only 59 International Falls, 69 right now in Chicago. So it won't be as hot there. But I mean, they're still sweating up there to the northeast, but they'll get a front moving on through. Not for us, though. It's just going to remain very hot. 92 at uh, noon today. Mostly sunny skies. High temperature 102. That's going to tie the record. We set record yesterday. Tie at 102 today. And of course, we have a heat advisory noon up until 8 o'clock tonight. Tomorrow, over the weekend, into next week, more triple digits. We'll continue to chalk them up, add to the, uh, the total number this year. And not a drop of rain in sight. I mean... You just can't find anything on long range forecast. I told uh, Mike and Steph earlier that I saw a video on Instagram yesterday, a guy talking off camera, like he was shooting it with his phone and he, he was saying, he was baby talking. He's like, baby, you've done such a great job lately. I love you. I just want to show you how much I appreciate you. And he leans over and he kisses his air conditioners <laughs> outside unit. Yes. So working those, overtime. Yes. All those ACs. Change filters, hard. keep them clean, you know, yeah. do everything because they're, they're doing yeoman's duty working overtime. So. Yeah. They said if the, the outside, the, the vent part, the grill is dirty, just spray it off with a hose. That'll help immensely. Yeah. yeah. And all the leaves and everything keep away mm -hmm. from it so yeah. it can circulate. Have to keep those working. Yes, we do. 649, about 80 degrees. Our monarch population has declined by nearly 90% over the last 20 years, and that's mainly because of habitat loss. I'm Sarah Acosta coming up tomorrow on GMSA. What is being done across our country to save our monarchs? And taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, it's 80 degrees already. And we're going to hit those triple digits once again. We'll be right back. Checkout time for one man at this Westside Motel came late last night, courtesy of members of the U.S. Marshals Lone Star Fugitive Task Force. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Now that capital murder suspect who they arrested here still getting checked into the Bear County Jail this morning. Task Force members say a detailed investigation led them to 24-year-old Juan Antonio Reyes here in the 1400 block of Culebra Road. He's accused of shooting two people, then setting fire to their home back on July 7th. And we cover that fire and and murder investigation. Firefighters found the bodies of a man and woman after putting out a fire at an apartment in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. They immediately called in homicide investigators. An arrest affidavit now shows both victims had been shot in the head. It also says police tied Reyes to the case through surveillance video. It says he's a relative of both of the people he's accused of killing and it appears that there were other people involved. Well, the medical examiner confirmed what the family told us back then, that 39-year-old Sergio Soto is the man who was killed. It shows that uh, the affidavit shows that the office is still trying to confirm the identity of the woman, although relatives had told us her name was Rachel Martinez. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And a reminder, Judson ISD is holding a job fair later today. The district is looking to fill several open spots. On-site interviews will be held, and if you're interested, you should bring your resume. That is happening this afternoon from 1 p.m. to 5 at Judson High School. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're going backstage at the newest musical performance at the Public Theater of San Antonio. We're going to hear from some of the cast and the director of the musical. They'll tell us about the power of love and what we as a community can take away from the show. That and more today on GMSA at 9. Time now, 6.55. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, we are ending Good Morning San Antonio on a good note here when it comes to traffic. Let's get one last look here around town. 35 at Brooklyn, 35 at Nogalitos. Looks pretty good out there to me. So as you get your morning started, just remember, there's still going to be some of those active construction spots taking place throughout the city. But as we take a look at Transguide, a lot of a quiet start, a lot of quiet areas, we should say. And as you bring it to the map, that's the same case. No congestion just yet. That's expected to change in a few minutes or so. But for now, just drive safe both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road.
It would be nice if these clouds stuck around, around all day. They will not, so we are definitely going to be heating up. We're at 81 right now, and upper 70s, low 80s. Temperatures are up compared to the past couple of mornings. 92 at noon, 102. New uh, tithes record for today. We set the record, of course, yesterday at 104. Heat advisory at uh, noon up until 8 o'clock, and more triple digits all the way through the weekend in through next week. Now, remember, we have a deal. You're going to start using Celsius tomorrow just yes. to help to mentally, help okay? Yes. <laughs> have a great day, guys. Thank you.